Well, good evening, my friends. You must forgive my tardiness, I'm afraid. As you may be aware, Mr. Tulov recently um, discharged himself prematurely from my care, and his whereabouts are presently unknown. This, in combination with the public inquiry into the Trident raid, has resulted in far too much of my time being consumed by lawyers and politicians of late, and they do also love to go on. I've just got back from my latest bout with them this very moment, so you'll forgive me if I'm a bit out of breath as well. I trust you've been well looked after by Matheson in my absence? Indeed, of course. What's that? Not enough prawn canopies. <laughs> Control yourself, man. Don't you know there's a war on? Enough of the prawn canopies, indeed. Well, if you've all had a chance to recharge your glasses, and, uh, ah, seems I've finally got my hands on a well-earned port. Thank you, Matheson. Then we had best get started. Welcome, then, all of you, to the third party engineering and acquisition of British Armour Group. You are here because you represent industrial empires that the War Office has deemed to have the capacity not only to build armoured fighting vehicles, but also with the necessary engineering expertise on staff to design new vehicles from the ground up. And yet again, you have been summoned here tonight to tender for a new War Office design specification. Now... North Africa, ladies and gentlemen, for now the only active front where we are currently engaged in armoured warfare with the Bosch. After the success of Operation Crusader at the end of last year, we were able to push Rommel back to here, El Aquilia. Tobruk was relieved and Rommel was licking his wounds and we thought we were finally back on the up. When, just at the end of January there, Rommel counterattacked hard and pushed the front line to here, Gazala. In this endeavour, I regret to inform you, he was aided by a new heavy panzer. POW tank crews were able to tell us it goes by the name of the Panzer Mark VI Tiger, but they did not know anything useful about its technical specifications. What we can say from our encounters with it in the desert are two things, and each is as alarming as the other. Firstly, this so-called Tiger has seriously big teeth. Jerry has managed to do what I'm sure we in this room have all been dreading. They have managed to put what amounts to their 88mm flat gun into a rotating turret as a dedicated tank gun. What that means, ladies and gentlemen, is that as of the 21st of January, anything with less than 6 inches of frontal armour is now twice as vulnerable on the front lines as it was in December. Secondly, they have managed to bolt sufficient armour onto the front of this heavy tank to keep out our semi-ubiquitous 75mm gun. As we haven't been able to capture one yet, precisely how much armour this monster is carrying along with its 88 is as yet unknown, and presumably classified information even within the enemy ranks. There is some good news, however. We did manage to take out one during a subsequent skirmish, using the 3-inch 20 hundredweight gun on a triskelly Arbiter tank destroyer. This was able to penetrate the flat frontal glacis here. I'm told, however, that... Even our dedicated tank destroyer was unable to go through its turret front, and the hull penetration was performed at alarmingly short range under ideal circumstances, which is, of course, far from ideal. The Triskelly Arbiter is not a viable counter to this enemy. It is too slow and too vulnerable to use without effective concealment, which, as you can imagine, is in pretty short supply out there in the desert. So, 100mm or more on the hull, and goodness knows how thick on the turret and able to bring the most powerful and accurate anti-tank gun on the modern battlefield, for now, to bear on anyone that so much as looks at it the wrong way. Moreover, I am told this machine was seen moving along the road by our scouts at speeds more comparable to that of a cruiser tank. Now, that may just be hearsay, but we can infer at least from this report that it is considerably faster and thereby more dangerous than it first appears. Our other vehicles deployed in the desert, the charred desert cruiser tank, and the Cataphract ICSV, with their M2 and 2-pounder guns respectively, have absolutely no hope whatsoever of dealing with it. We are deploying what KT Mark 13 cruisers we can spare to the area ASAP, but even with the 12-pounder gun we expect they will have to attempt a flanking manoeuvre in order to have success in defeating the Tiger's armour, and doing so without exposing themselves to that notorious 88 will be, in a word, exciting, and not in the fun sense. The War Office don't like this one bit, and so they have drawn up a specification for a new heavy tank destroyer, one which will be able to fight the Tiger head-on and win. That is its one purpose, to erase from the horizon this advantage Jerry has wrought for himself before it can claim any more ground from us. The crux of the idea 
is to design an armoured vehicle that can bring the QF 3.7-inch AA gun to bear in an anti-tank role. We've used it in that capacity before when pressed, but its carriage and mounting were never designed for prolonged firing at low angles. It is not so readily employed in that role as its German counterpart. Royal Ordnance have therefore been tasked with developing a variant of this gun for use in armoured fighting vehicles, which will be known henceforth as the Ordnance Quick Firing 28 Pounder Mark I. Your job is to devise a vehicle which can handle such an enormous gun. A casemate design is the order of the day here, and one which is very heavily armoured too, at least from the front. Six inches of frontal protection will be the minimum requirement. That's a lot of armour, on top of a heavy gun, so you're going to need to carefully consider ground pressure, as we'll be deploying this machine to the desert. Furthermore, as it will be operating primarily in North Africa, in the immediate instance anyway, logistics have stipulated that it must use the same diesel fuel as the charred cruiser and cataphract ICSV, which form the backbone of our armoured forces in North Africa. That means that the best power plant we can offer you currently is the twin AEC-190 unit you are now all too familiar with, I'm sure. It's a tried and true engine at this point, but 262 horsepower is not a lot for what is sure to be a vehicle well in the 30-ton bracket. Fortunately, the War Office have demanded only that this design keep to the infantry tank standard of 15 miles per hour top speed, so there is some hope for your success in this endeavour. Now, I should warn you that this will not be a large contract when all is said and done. This is a specialised vehicle for a specific role. Only a handful will be attached to each armoured brigade, and will be called upon to provide heavy anti-tank support as and when commanders encounter this new heavy panzer that they've all got their knickers in a twist about. Nevertheless, I must urge you to put your most capable engineers to work on this task and give it your best shot. While small in number, these vehicles will have the potential to have a marked impact on the fortunes of war, and most certainly on frontline morale. The Tiger is clearly designed to instill a primal fear in our boys, and the name proves it. Your job is to show Jerry and indeed our boys that we don't fear tigers in the British Empire. We bring our biggest guns, and we hunt them, stuff them, and put them in museums. Build me a tiger killer, worthy of this esteemed committee, for king and country. Um, pardon me, I may have got rather carried away there. Anyway, please see the following specification. All of the parameters are entirely your choice if they are not listed in the specification. Your deadline for this project, ladies and gentlemen, is just two weeks hence, the 15th of March, owing to the urgent need to have a vehicle ready which can reliably answer this new and present threat. Without further ado then, I call this 11th meeting of the Third Party Engineering and Acquisition of British Armour Group to a close. To your drawing boards, my friends. Good luck, Godspeed, and God save the King. (laughs) 